Okay, um, we're going to start with chapters 10-1 and 11-1. And this is energy and work, and we're not going to do 10-2. We're not going to do anything else in 11. So don't worry about that stuff. Just 10-1 and 11-1. Okay, our first formula is work, and this is really, really important. If um, In order to do work, you have to have the object move. Okay, so you have to have something move. You see I put it in red, and I also... Um, I wrote in bold letters underneath it, if nothing moves, no work is done. This is because it's really, really key. It's really important that you understand that you have to, um, you have to move something uh -oh, in order for work to occur. If you're not moving, like I just moved that screen, so I did some work. Otherwise, no work is being done. Work is measured in joules. This is also really, really key. Um, you can see that a joule is equal to a newton times a meter, which makes sense because our formula is force times distance, and force is in newtons and distance is in meters. So a joule is a newton times a meter or a kilogram times a meter squared, second squared. And so here's our formula, work equals force times distance, and you can put it in the triangle if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay. Um, energy. Energy is the ability of an object to produce change in itself. You don't actually have to produce change in yourself, but you have to have the ability to do it. Okay, I have the ability to go run 10 miles tonight, but that does not mean I'm actually going to run 10 miles tonight. Okay, so that's the difference. You have the ability to move, you have the ability to fall with potential energy. It's all about um, having the ability to do something, but you don't necessarily have to do it. Okay, now kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy of moving. We talked about this with springs and now we're talking about it with other stuff. It's measured in joules just like work so you don't have to come up with a whole nother unit. You've already got the same one and then it's your one-half mass times velocity squared. This is really important when you think about car crashes and stuff because if your velocity increases just by a mile, if you go from 24 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour, your, um, your, your kinetic energy is actually exponentially increased which that's why um, car crashes hurt a lot more with even just a little bit more change in speed. Now this guy, this work energy theorem, it's just important um, because sometimes they'll ask you to find the kinetic energy and they only gave you stuff to find work and so you can find the work and see that that is equal to the change in kinetic energy and so um, that's kind of where that comes into play. Now, what's really important is that um, your initial, oops, here we go, I'm moving the screen. Your initial kinetic energy is usually zero because whatever thing you have is usually not moving. And so your change is usually whatever you end up with minus zero, which means whatever you end up with, your final is your change um, for stuff like this. Now, sometimes they'll give you problems and they'll say, like, so-and-so is pulling a box with a rope at an angle of 30 degrees, what work was done. And they'll give you a force and they'll give you a distance, but then you've got to put in that angle somewhere. And that's where this one comes into play. This is actually the only formula that we have that has um, cosine. And so whenever you see an angle, you know that this is the formula you're going to use because it's the only one we have that has angles. important to know that if the force is at right angles to the motion, the work is going to be zero. And there's two reasons for this. One, if you're pulling up on something, it's not going to move to the left or the right. It's going to move up. And the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And anything times zero is zero. Okay. Now let's try an example problem. We have this um, we have this 105 gram hockey puck and it's sliding across the ice and a player is exerting a constant 4.5 newton force over a distance of 0.15 meters. And we want to know how much work the player does on the puck. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to write all of the things that we know. So the first thing that we know is that our mass is 105 grams. Okay. Now, whenever we do math problems, we can't leave stuff in grams. We always want to move it to kilograms. 
So I'm just going to do a little conversion here and I'm going to write it right here so I've got it all ready to go. And we know that there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So I'm going to have 0 0.105. Kilograms as my actual mass that I'm going to use in the math problem. Okay, and then we have a um, a force of 4.5 newtons. So we can write that down as something that we know. And then they also gave us a distance of 0 0.15 meters. Okay, and so they want us to find the work. Okay, we have these grams, we have these newtons, we have these distances, and they want us to find the work. So our work formula is just work equals force times distance. And so you can see that we don't even need that M they gave us. They totally gave us that just to throw us off, and we don't even need that. So we can actually go ahead and cross it out if you want, if it makes you feel better. Okay, because all we need is the um, is the force and the distance. So then we can just take our force, 4.5 newtons, multiply it by 0.15 meters, and that's all you do. You'd get 0 0.675, and that's going to be in joules because the units of work is joules. Okay, so that's all you have to do for that one. It's not too bad. Compared to what we've been doing before, it's like kindergarten. So, let's see what part B says. Part B says, what is the change in the puck's energy? We have 0 0.675 joules. And then it says, what is the change in puck's energy? So it wants our change in kinetic energy, because our, our uh, puck is moving. But remember, your kinetic energy formula is one half mv squared. And they gave us an m, which is really nice of them, but they didn't give us a v and they didn't give us a time, even though they gave us a distance. So we can't figure out that v anyway. But we do have that really handy work energy form theorem that says your work is just equal to your change in kinetic energy. And so our work will be um, that 0 0.675 that we found, and so our kinetic energy will actually be 0 0.6752. So for this part, you don't even have to do any math. You can just keep the answer you had from before. So that's pretty handy. Now let's try one at an angle. So we have this sailor. He's pulling a boat a distance, or 30 meters. And then he's using a rope, and this rope is making an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. So we know that that's an angle. So right now, this we go ahead and key you in that we're probably going to want to use that formula that has angles in it, because it's the only one we have that has angles. And then we have a force of 255 newtons. Okay, so we were given this formula. Work is force times distance, which is just like the other one. But then they told us that if we want to go at an angle, we have to multiply that by cosine of theta. And so we can go ahead and we can plug in all our stuff. And you're going to get a big number, and that's OK, because you are pulling a sailboat almost 90 feet. So you probably will get a big number. And if you want to put it in your calculator all at once, you've got to put all these parentheses in there. You can't leave one out at all. And you get 6,933 and a whole bunch of decimal places. I like to stand to two. And then again, it's still in joules. And so that's how you solve one of the ones that has an angle. It's just one step more than the other ones, but it's not bad at all. So we talked about work. We talked about kinetic energy, and then we solved a couple of problems, and we'll talk about it tomorrow in class.